Welcome to Washington Hospital Today, dedicated to informing residents about healthcare topics and issues. Through programs featuring community forums and free health and wellness classes, our goal is to empower community members with the information needed to make informed health decisions. Washington Hospital has been providing health care to the residents of the Washington Township Healthcare District for the past 60 years. Hello, welcome to today's presentation, Carotid Artery Disease. What is it? How can we treat it? Presented by Dr. Stella Azuqua, vascular surgeon with Washington Township Medical Foundation. Dr. Azuqua is board certified in both general and vascular surgery. She chose vascular surgery for two simple reasons, the varied diverse nature of the specialty and the long-term relationships built around her patient's care. Thanks to her training in both general and vascular surgery, Dr. Azuqua has a wide range of knowledge and expertise as it relates to applying minimally invasive, cutting edge, and evidence-based surgical treatments. This background aids in her decision-making process that is centered on what is best for her patient. Please welcome Dr. Azuqua. Thank you very much for having me. Today we're going to talk about carotid artery disease. What is it? How can we treat it? First, let's talk about what it is. Carotid artery disease is narrowing of the internal carotid artery. The so carotid artery is a major blood vessel in the neck that carries blood to the brain. <clears throat> and when you have narrowing, or disease of this artery that can predispose you to having a stroke. As we all know, stroke is a leading cause of death and disability. The main goal in treating carotid disease is to prevent stroke in the long term. Here is a brief illustration of the carotid artery. One moment. <clears throat> this is the carotid artery which is in the, located in the neck and it divides into two and the one we're going with the disease mostly mostly happens here in the carotid bifurcation and involves the internal carotid artery which goes up to the brain what are the causes of disease or narrowing at that artery the most common cause of disease and narrowing at this artery or that location is atherosclerotic plaque. We have an illustration of such a plaque here, often happening on the posterior wall at the bifurcation, causing narrowing of that internal carotid artery. Stroke associated with carotid atherosclerotic disease can occur through several different mechanisms. Briefly, let's summarize everything we've talked about. The carotid artery is located in the neck. It vessel is one of the major blood supplies to the brain. Narrowing and disease in this segment can predispose one to having a stroke. The most common cause of disease and narrowing in this segment is atherosclerotic disease. How does atherosclerotic disease cause stroke or how can it occur related, uh, lead to stroke? There are several different mechanisms. One, the cholesterol debris or crystals can break off and travel up to the brain, occluding blood flow to the brain, causing a stroke. A clot can form on the plaque, break off, and travel up to the brain, causing a stroke. Another mechanism is that the narrowing can be so severe that you get decreased blood flow to the brain. Briefly, here is an illustration of these mechanisms. Here we have the atherosclerotic plaque with the debris that is within the plaque. The narrowing can be so severe that we have decreased blood flow to the brain predisposing to stroke. Or the atherosclerotic plaque can become very unstable rupture, and then that debris can travel up to the brain and cause a stroke. Here is an example of such debris traveling up to the brain and leading to a stroke. <clears throat> 
How do we diagnose carotid atherosclerotic disease? One is through a carotid duplex and ultrasound. What the carotid duplex and ultrasound allows us to do is look at the degree of stenosis by allowing us to look at the way blood is flowing through that segment of the artery. The carotid ultrasound also allows us to look at the plaque morphology. Additionally, we order CTAs and MRAs, which will also allow us to look at the degree of stenosis and the type of plaque that we're dealing with. Now let's talk about how we can treat it. But before we talk about how we can treat it, let's again summarize what we've talked about so far. One, the carotid artery is an artery that is a major supply to the brain. Disease in this segment can predispose one to having a stroke. <clears throat> the most common cause of disease and narrowing in this segment is atherosclerotic plaque. So now let's begin to talk about how we can treat it. First and foremost, whether we're going to offer surgical therapy or not, an individual must be on medical therapy, and that medical therapy is directed primarily at their atherosclerotic risk factors. Before we begin to talk about the surgical therapy that is directed at carotid artery disease, let's talk about that medical therapy. Again, what is the goal of the medical therapy? The goal of medical therapy is to limit progression of the atherosclerotic plaque. Management of those atherosclerotic risk factors will include getting excellent control of your blood pressure, getting your cholesterol levels or dyslipidemia, hyperlipidemia under control. If you have diabetes, getting your diabetes under control. And of course, stop smoking. Now let's talk about surgical therapy of carotid atherosclerotic disease. One is carotid endarterectomy. Two, and really, carotid artery stenting, of which there are two methods of doing this. The decision on which surgical procedure to undergo will be based on multiple factors that will be decided by your doctor. One will be, is the carotid disease causing symptoms or not? What are the symptoms? That would be a symptom of stroke um, or even a mini stroke such as a TIA. What is the degree of stenosis and what does the plaque look like on imaging? Another thing that will be considered to tailor the surgical therapy will be the medical comorbidities of the patient and the operative risk of the patient, which is a direct inference from the medical comorbidity of the patient. And then another thing that, of course, will be considered will be the life expectancy of the patient. Briefly, what a carotid endarterectomy is, an incision is made on the neck, exposing the carotid vessels, and the atherosclerotic plaque itself is then removed and the artery is patched close. Again, remember, the purpose of the operation is to remove the plaque and decrease one's future risk of having a stroke. Here is an illustration of such a plaque at the carotid bifurcation as it extends into the internal carotid artery. This is the plaque that has been removed. The other surgical therapy options is carotid artery stenting. One is through the femoral vessels, blood vessels in your groin, and accessing through there with the wires and catheters, and then a stent is placed in the carotid artery to treat the disease. Again, the goal of this is to decrease the risk of future stroke. The other is a different method for carotid artery stenting. An incision is made over the common carotid artery. Um, the flow is directed away from the internal carotid artery to protect the brain from the plaque and the debris traveling up to the brain. The advantage of this method is that you do not have to navigate the blood vessels from the groin up into the area of treatment in the neck. 
Here is an illustration of carotid artery stenting. We have an angiogram here which shows severe disease in the carotid bifurcation and internal carotid artery. And now we have intervened with a stent. Again, another illustration which showed pretty significant narrowing and disease. And now we have intervened with a stent. That is all. I want to thank you, and I will accept any questions at this time. Great. Thank you, doctor. We do have some questions. Um, the first question is, based on my family history, am I at greater risk for carotid artery disease? Thank you for this question. <clears throat> If you have a significant family history of atherosclerotic disease, again, high, high cholesterol, it is important to get plugged into the system, see your primary care physicians, primary care providers to assess your atherosclerotic risk factors because those risk factors can put you at elevated risk for carotid disease. Thank you. Our next question, what dietary choices should I be making for cardiovascular health? Excellent question. Um, dietary choices for cardiovascular health, most important, try to decrease processed foods in your diet. A healthy Mediterranean style diet has really been purported to decrease um, your, um, to improve cardiovascular health. Um, so increasing plant-based diets, minimizing rate me red meat, um, and again, if you have diabetes, uh, making sure that you are plugged into the system and getting good diet control. And if you need to be on medication for glycemic control, making sure that you are started immediately on that um, to, decrease, to improve your cardiovascular health, manage your atherosclerotic risk factors, and decrease the complications related to systemic atherosclerotic disease. Thank you. And our last question is, are there tests that you would recommend based on my risk factors? Again, if you have significant atherosclerotic risk factors, which includes smoking, high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol levels, um, you should be plugged into the system, talking with your primary care physicians and primary care providers um, to allow an assessment of your risk factors and necessary testing that may be needed that may have to be done to screen uh, for the complications of systemic atherosclerotic disease, which can include carotid disease. Thank you. This concludes our program. Thank you, doctor, for taking your time to be here with us today and presenting this insightful presentation. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in. The entire broadcast of today's presentation will be available on our Facebook page and YouTube.